So good morning. Today we have our friend Chris, who's known as Model Airplane Maker on YouTube. He runs a channel. Maker or builder? Maker. It is maker. <sighs> See, I doubted myself. I shouldn't have doubted myself. Anyways, he runs a YouTube channel called Model Airplane Maker. I suggest you check it out. We will leave a link at the end of this uh, video for you to uh, check it out. He's been on there for a few years and he has very good content about modeling. And he's a good friend of the Hobby Center, so we're, of course, glad to have you here. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Today we're going on with our basics of modeling 101, we call it. Just dumbing it right down for people that are new to the hobby, coming back to the hobby, or just thinking about getting into the hobby. So we're giving you the most basic stuff. We started with the basic assembly, basic tools. Ian and I did that, uh, I think, two weeks ago. And Chris has offered to come in today and talk to us about decals. Now decals is the last stage of the building process. They're colorful, they give your model identity, they, 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 you know, they classify it. So you got an airplane, but once you put those numbers and roundels, you've got a nationality, you've got a serial number, you just made it into a specific thing. And this is where a lot of models either get really made or really broken as it were, because decals or decals, as some of our friends like to say, are what is the last step. And, and like I say, it's the finishing touch. It's the pièce de résistance. So lead away, sir. Well, it can be the pièce de résistance if you can get them to work. Yes. Um, so like Bill said, the, this is the step that usually comes at the very end of the project. You already have the model painted, you already have it built. And what we're going to do today is just talk about a little bit what decals are. And we're going to give you some tips and techniques on how to make them work a little bit better for you, or at least get more consistent results. Um, because what I've found is if you're lucky and you follow the instructions from the model, um, sometimes they, they work absolutely perfectly and there's nothing to worry about. But other times, at least in my experience, even if you follow the directions as best you can, you get some results that you're not very happy with. And usually this falls into one of three things. It's usually they don't stick or they won't stay stuck uh, after the build is done. They won't sink into the detail, like the panel lines, or there might be some elevated detail that won't uh, settle around those uh, those details. And uh, the last one's called silvering, and, and that's, generally speaking, that is when a bit of air gets caught underneath the decal, and it just dries that way, and when you look at it, and I'll show you a couple of examples here, you're just going to see a little bit of actually a silver color, but it's really just trapped air underneath the film. So Can you back up half a second. Yeah, sure. So, what exactly is a decal? You ask. Now, some people call them stickers. No, they're not stickers. A sticker is something that you would peel off and apply, and some really, really, really basic models do include those. They're aimed at children to make it an easy process to put markings on. You would definitely see them for all time. They're thick, and they, you know, they sit on the surface of. Them. Now a decal, or decal, is it's ink or paint um, that's printed on a piece of paper and then over top of it there is a film. And most manufacturers cut the film right around the decal, like right around the art. But that's what you're working with. You're working with a very thin amount of ink that's covered with a thicker, clear carrier film. Right. And that's what we're going to try and do today, at least show you how you are going to manipulate that film in order to get it to sink and stay, most importantly, on your model. So if you want to just take a quick look here, and we're going to switch to the close-up camera, I'm going to give you an example of a lot of luck where the decal fit perfectly into the, oh, it's, there you go, into the detail of the wing. So if you take a look at the wing, you're going to see all of that. So the, the J, B, A, A, I are all decals, and they all sunk into the surface. And that was just following the directions of placing them in the water, placing them on the model, and leaving it at that. So sometimes, and we're going to get into that, it works out absolutely beautifully. But other times, which is why I brought the big Corsair here, it doesn't work so perfectly. So again, I followed the directions on the model kit, and if you look at the FF-75, you can see that those numbers have some, well, that's silvering, that's air trapped air bubbles underneath the decal film. 
So what we're going to do today is talk about those three things that I thought might be most beneficial and then give you a demonstration. So I may be getting ahead. You, have, you kind of have a sketch outline here. So this one here is very nice and glossy, right? You lay those decals down and you gloss coat it after to seal them onto the model. Now I'm guessing that surface was glossy when you put them on as well? Yes. And it was nice and smooth. Now I, I raised this topic already on a previous video and I got jumped on really hard about uh, the process of putting decals onto gloss or minimally semi-gloss, never on flat. And I had all kinds of people jump on me and say, yes, yes, you can put them on flat, you can put them on flat. It's never worked for me and I've never talked to anybody except these online people that jumped on it that have successfully done this. And for my reasoning, say you have a window plane, one of those vinyl window planes. If you put that on a dirty window, i.e. on a smooth, clean surface, that thing will not stick. It will eventually find its way off. You might get it on, but eventually it's going to work its way off because there's stuff trapped behind it. You're not getting that, that adhesion that you get on a smooth surface. So I have laid decals on flat paint. And I clear coat over them and they look wonderful. And then a certain point in time later, they're silvering like crazy. And if I touch them, off they go. So clearly that didn't work for me. So, I mean, let's go into it. I, I have a feeling I know what those commenters were saying. And if we're, we're talking about basic skills and skills to get you to the next level, which is let's minimize the, the potential for something to go wrong. So Bill's right, um, the smoother the surface, the more likely you're gonna have success with it. And yes, it is possible to put a decal on a flat surface, but I will tell you, it will not be a rough flat surface. This is going to be a really properly applied flat paint that has probably been even rubbed down with a, a fabric or something like that to, to make sure that everything is knocked down and gets it as smooth as possible. And then before the decal goes on, there is solution that's put on the model. There is that the decal that's put on and then it's worked into that surface. So you're going to be doing a lot of work in order to get the same result that might come a little bit easier with a glossier or at least a you know, uh, even gloss paints or even clear coated gloss over it, that's going to get you there a little bit easier. But it, I mean, Bill, it will work, but you're going to be working at it to get it to, to that level. Whenever you get a number of modelers together, you'll never get anybody to agree on anything <laughs> anyways. We all have our ways that work and our ways that don't work, and once we find a system, we generally stick with it. So let's start with the first problem, which is my, my decal won't stick or it won't stay on. And you alluded to it properly, which is the surface. How did you prepare the surface? Uh, the smoother the paint, whether it's flat or glossy, the smoother the better. And, and what we're talking about today, if you have a gloss surface, it's going to be even easier to make sure that the thing stays stuck. Also, you're going to have to move it around on the surface no matter what. You, you might have a perfect placement initially, you're going to have to nudge it into place. It's just that much easier to do with a gloss surface. And the other aspect of it not sticking is a lot of people leave the decal in the water too long. Yes. So in the demonstration later on, we're going to show you just need about 20 seconds. 20 seconds in warm or hot water, that is all you need. Take it out of the water, rest it on a towel or something like that, and you're going to have that wonderful adhesion glue, I don't know what it is, but there's some sort of glue they put on you. You don't need a lot of it, but you need some of it. If you let the paper fall off in the water, you're going to lose all that wonderful glue and it's not going to stay on your model. And then to keep it on the model, no matter how good of a modeler you are, you really should seal them in when you're done. So once they're all dry, um, use either a clear coat of gloss or flat, it doesn't really matter, but you want that nice uh, coverage over the decal so that it doesn't eventually pop off on you. Plus, if it's a nice thin decal, I mean, some are thicker than others, but if it's a nice thin decal and you put that clear coating on, it kind of melds it into the whole finish. So yep. it doesn't look raised from the rest of the surrounding area. That's right. Yeah. So the second issue that uh, often we run into is that the decal goes on the surface, but it doesn't sink into the detail. That, and there are, 
sometimes it just really depends on the, on the ones you're working with. I know some major manufacturers that have uh, very thick decals that just, no matter what you want to do, they just will not cooperate. Um, uh, but then there are strategies to get around that. So one of the strategies is let's keep that decal film nice and hot, nice and warm, because we want to make it um, pliable, flexible, and we want it to sink in. So if we start with, with getting that decal in the hot water, and we keep it warm when it's on the model, um, that's going to help us really sink in. The other thing is the setting solution, which is, uh, I mean, the most popular one is micro set. If you pull that onto your model before sticking the decal on it, that's just going to help keep things pliable a little bit longer for you. And then the last thing is just to take a brush and to really work that decal into the, uh, all the detail and all the panel lines. That will take care of about 75% of it. If you still have a, a decal that does not cooperate after you've done that, then the last step is to get a piece of towel or uh, an old t-shirt dip it in some hot water, and then press it onto the decal, onto the surface, keeping it nice and hot. Do that a few times, and that's probably gonna take care of the last little bit. And ultimately, and we'll get into this in a minute, but I don't like using uh, salts, like the, uh, the decal like salt sets. Salt sets. Um, super Mark Strong, Super yeah. Mark Strong, because, and the reason why I don't like it is because I can't always be consistent with the results. It's a very strong solution to get that decal to sink in, so I avoid it as much as possible, but sometimes when the thing just will not cooperate, that's your last great hope of getting that to settle in. Um, if you do use it, here's a couple of tips. One, make sure the decal is dry. It's not wet from the other solutions and water that you might have placed on it. I'm not talking next day bone dry, but dry um, and, and then just use as little as possible brushing it directly on the decal and then let it go. Don't slather your entire model because it will react with a lot of paint, it will react with a lot of, of uh, clear coats, it will just and it will probably if you're not careful for pools it will, it will ruin the paint on your model. So that's why I, I, I avoid it as much as I possibly can. Now I remember a few years back I think it was Rebel or Monogram possibly both uh, when you put the decals on the model, there was white uh, stuff coming out. I think it was part of their, their glue or adhesive that was on the decal. So sometimes when you put these things out, have a look, do a little wipe around the area. Like just don't let it sit there and dry on its own. You know, the liquid will run or it will evaporate and you might be left with this adhesive material behind and it's really hard to get off once it's there, especially if it's on a, you know, on a smooth, flat surface that you didn't clear coat or flat or gloss coat. So just always keep an eye on it. Make sure it's doing what you want. It doesn't shift a little bit. It doesn't lift a little bit. And address it, you know, before it's too late. Right. Right. Absolutely right. Um, the last one is the silvering. So that is all about how you actually place the decal on the model. At least most of it is. Um, once again, if you use hot water, you get a nice pliable decal that goes on the surface. You use a little bit of set solution and you put a little bubble of it. That's all you really need. You put a little bubble of set solution on the surface of the model. Then you slide the model, uh, sorry, you slide the decal onto the model and you gently work from the center out, getting all those air bubbles out. And the, the, the smoother the surface and the more you work at it, less likely you're going to have silver right now. There are just going to be, uh, every now and then, some decals that this is going to happen. You're going to get a little bit of air trapped underneath. And if this happens to you, it's not the end of the world. There's a few things you can do. Uh, the most popular one being take an extremely new um, X-Acto or scalpel and just poke at where those uh, silvering colors are and put a little bit of solution on that, just a touch to get that to sink back down again. And again, that should work most of the time in case you make a mistake. Um, but if you if you follow some of these uh, directions with a little bit of practice, it really you, you should avoid you should avoid it most of the time. 
So I'm going to take a little break and then we're going to lay out our stuff here and show you how to actually apply a decal. Absolutely, that's, that, that's the easiest thing to do. So we'll take a really quick break, we'll set up for that, and then we'll show you the mechanics of laying a decal onto a model. See you around. And we're back. So we're going to show you the basics of decal placement. Uh, before we get into that though, we, we had alluded to some products to help make uh, decal uh, laying easier for you. Uh, the two on the left, Chris mentioned, are Microset and Microsol pretty much the standard. I mean, I can't imagine a single hobby shop in North America that doesn't stock these particular things. And they're probably, what, the weakest? They're, they're probably yeah. the, the most basic, weakest solutions you could use. One is for putting the decal on, sorry, the decal on, and one is for putting the decal uh, afterwards to get it to set, as we mentioned. And because they're kind of the, on the weak side, you're not likely going to mess up anything. Now, we have ones from Japan. They're Tamiya products. They're, they're strong and extra strong. I haven't got experience with them. Uh, with yourself? I have, and they're very strong. Very strong. So you need a little bit of practice uh, before you use it. And that's another good tip. If you're, if you're starting out with a new product, take one of the, the decals off of the sheet put it on, test it, see how it works, and that way you know before you're using it on your final model how much or how little of this stuff to use. We have a decal set from our friends at Humbrol from the UK. Again, I have not used it. We have a decal adhesive. Now this would seem to me that it would replace or enhance the, the glue portion of your decal. Um, it's got a little brush in it, it's just a clear formula. Again, I have not used it, I don't think Chris is either. Uh, we really invite you to chime in in our comment section if you have experience with these products that we have not. Please share your knowledge because sharing knowledge just makes us better hobbyists. This one I have used. This is one strong one. That's now, the, uh, the nuclear option. Nuclear option. When you put this on a decal, you just walk away from it. You leave it alone because it will start puckering up. It will start doing things. And you'll think, oh my goodness. And you'll start trying to move it. And as soon as you touch that thing, you wreck it. It's so soft, it just almost melts. It just tears apart. Now, the good part about this stuff is it will lay super stubborn decals. Um, I've done Rebel cars and they have the, the, the dashboard, you know, the little knobs, and they give you decals to put on those knobs. So you're basically putting something like this on something like this, and that's how it sits. You put a little bit of this on and you just right down. Just pulls it right down over it. So it's very good for those sorts of applications. What's your experience with it? It's great. I find it better for a lot of kit uh, decals. But once you get to the aftermarket ones, I would really recommend testing because not only will it make them shrivel, it will start to eat them, uh, depending on what type of uh, decal that you're using. It's just, this is the strongest uh, so settings, or sorry, the solution that you, you could use um, to get to that stubborn um, uh, decal to get it to set into the, the surface. The strongest setting solution legally allowed. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's move these out of the way so Chris can show us. Some All right, decal. so as you can see, I have a painted surface. This is, in this case, it's gloss. I used a, a gloss um, paint, and that is it. So this is acrylic gloss paint, and it's as you can see, it's a nice, shiny, and smooth surface, key being the smooth thing. You're also going to notice something very unusual that I use, which is this baby bottle warmer. I, I've tried just using hot water and running to my bench uh, to put it in. It doesn't stay stay hot very long. This thing, when I set it to the highest level, it's just warm enough to be, well, you would never give this to a baby, that's for sure, um, but it keeps it very, very hot and it makes the surface carrier film of the decal pliable. I also have a little towel, and that's where I'm gonna rest the decal on. I get it nice and warm, I rest it right beside that way it keeps warm when I'm waiting for the film to come off the paper. So, without, oh, and the last bit, sorry, is I use a little bit of micro set, and we're gonna paint that on. When, so we, it's almost a, a timing thing, you have to get ready ahead of time because there's a things that you're gonna do in quick succession. Yeah. Um, and then I just use a basic brush to both put the, the set on the on the surface and then to work the decal into the surface. So this doesn't take long. I'm just gonna grab 
deco. It's going to go in the water very quick. I'm going to give it maybe 5-10 seconds and it comes out. Sometimes these things curl up on you as you can see. Sometimes it's much worse than this. I can flip this around. There we go. And right now I'm just letting the warm water uh, dilute the adhesive on the back of the deco. All I'm doing now is just putting a little drip of set on the model. And if I just test this with my finger, I bet this is no, nope, it's still not it's still not ready. So we can just wait a second, get ourselves situated. Let's test this again. Okay, so now you can see that it's just starting to move, which is probably the perfect time to bring it over to the model. In order to avoid silvering, what we're going to do is we're going to dip one side of the decal onto the surface and gradually push the rest off. So why not just show you what I mean? I'm just going to slide it off so you're not going to trap any air as you do this. Just careful, 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 careful. And there we go. Now, here comes the fun part. Don't eat that, don't eat that. While it's still nice and pliable, I can move this to the right position fairly easily with my finger or with the brush. And now I'm going to work out all of the air bubbles out of the surface. Now, I'm just using a basic t-shirt here to dry the brush to get all the stuff off as I'm doing this. If That's fine. Um, if you're going to use something like a paper, um, paper version, don't use paper towel. The reason why paper towel, I, I don't use it, is because it has a lot of fibers that come off. And then all you're doing is sort of bringing all these little fibers onto your model. If you want to use a paper, a paper Product use a coffee, uh, coffee filter. Look at those things; just do not have any form of fibers that come off, or if they do, they're very, very small. So as you can see, I'm just working this bubbles out, and I'm also trying to put this deco right into the surface. Now, can you see? So, okay, so if I just move it up, into, okay, so you see it's starting to conform with some of the surface. Detail there, right there. So if you look right there, it's starting to go. You see the little rib details. Right? Yeah. So as we're doing this, we're just pushing it in, pushing it in. Sometimes this takes a while. But like, as you can notice, I'm not using any solutions at this point. I'm just working this stuff in. And yeah, they're right in the blue. You can start to see it go. Okay. We might have to give you a post production. There, there you go. You can start seeing it really start to conform with the detail. Now I'm going to push it more, push it more. And Bill, can you see? Can you see the panel line starting to show? Yes, it did. Now, and I notice it's not moving as much now either. You, you seem to have got it placed, and as you're working the, the uh, bubbles and whatnot, oh, it's not moving. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, of course it does. Well, these things happen. It wasn't until it did. Yes. These things happen, so let's fix it. This is a good thing, actually. So you can show people, like, don't panic. Don't, don't panic. It's don't not, throw it away. Don't. Not the end of the world. It just means a little bit more work for you. But this is not the end of the world. We can always fix it. And the truth is, this happens more often than you think. There you go. And then you just put, put it back to where it's supposed to be. So you see, it's very flexible, very pliable, and back we go. So, no harm, no foul. And don't panic if it tears. Well, don't panic if it, if it tears. tears. Now you've got two decals instead of one. So I'll try this again. <laughs> there we go. Now, you might find that you get to this point and yeah, it's settling over the surface nicely, but it's not settling into the crevices. So the last little bit of um, strategy you can use is take a, 
any sort of towel. I'm using a t-shirt. Get it into the hot, hot water. Really hot. And then you just push it right in. And this is avoiding using solutions. Press decal solutions. Sorry, decal solutions. There we go. Now look at that. You see? Now, do you ever have to resort to uh, using like an X-Acto blade on your decals to get them to conform into trenches and end lines and whatnot? Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, usually it's around things like hinges, so like a, a rudder or aileron or a uh, flap. With a deep. With a deep one. Uh, sometimes the, uh, the decal just doesn't have enough decal to get into that. So brand new blade, either X-Acto or scalpel, which is what I prefer, and very carefully, while the while it's a little bit, not bone dry, but dry, uh, trace a gentle line in order to cut it, and then you can use one of these solutions to make it conform after the fact. So it's possible that you have to have a very steady hand. Okay. All right, so now that I've applied the heat, I'm gonna show Bill, Bill can you see the, how it's fit right into the panels. Oh yeah, yeah okay. it's in all the panels, especially on the white on the star, I can see them all disappearing. So we will have a nice close-up image, because you can kind of see it. Yeah. But you can't see how it's really dug in. If, you know, if the first time with the heat doesn't work, not a problem, you can do it again. It's just being as gentle as you can, pushing that material into the surface. And there you go. And you can even brush it. Now I've heard of some modelers even then using a, a, a hair dryer, blow dryer, to keep the, the decal warm and, and constantly do this. I've tried it. It works. But you got to keep that thing moving. <laughs> Otherwise, you could scorch the surface or start melting the plastic, so you have to, you know, don't go extreme. There you go. So, there you have it. It's on. It is not coming off. And it's sinking nicely into the into the detail. Once it's all nice and dry, you don't need solutions on this, but you will need, like we said, you'll need to put some sort of clear coat on it to seal it in. Perfect. Seems pretty straightforward. Now we discussed if it came back off again, we discussed if it splits or something, now you're dealing with two components as opposed to one. Um, what about curved surfaces? And, and, you know, we're, we, here we did a nice flat wing. Right. What if we're doing around a nose or, or, or some kind of uh, you know, varied surface? So those are compound curves, and what I have found is you really have to work the, the decal in. Uh, using these techniques because it's going to start to fold on itself because it's flat. It starts flat you want it to curve. Um, there you're going to probably have to use some of these solutions after the fact. Once it's uh, a little you know, dry to the touch just to get that last little bit of uh, material to settle down. Or what I've seen is people cut them. So if you have a piece that's supposed to fit around a, a, a cowl or something like that, you can make cuts and form them together in order to increase your chances that they don't fall over on each other. That's a good tip. Or you can go all the way and just paint it. You can avoid the, the decal and just paint the surface, but that's not what we're talking about. No, that's today is about decals, strictly decals. I think you've presented everything well. Uh, I, I learned something myself here with the warm water. I always use warm water from the tap when I do my uh, decals. I never thought of using something to keep the water warm. In this case, it's a baby, baby bottle warmer, but they also have little warmers for um, coffee mugs and things like that. You could you have a mug on there, keep that warm and do your decals on that. Um, that was a good tip. I love that one. I'm going to use it myself. The thing about the cotton cloths, that was also a very good one. I have been a, a paper towel guy for years, not realizing that uh, there's a better way to do it. And also constantly applying the heated water to the decal to keep it, you know, 
of snuggling in and conforming. That, that was a great tip for me. Um, as we stated earlier about the solutions and whatnot, we'd love you to share your experiences with uh, decals and how they work for you and what's what right and what's what's wrong. Uh, because, you know, we share information, we all become better models. I'm a firm believer in that. That's why we're doing this series, and that's why we're happy to have Chris here to talk to us about it today. Any final thoughts, sir? Um, no, but if you're looking for one of these baby bottle warmers, I would say Facebook Marketplace. I'm sure there's about 7,000 of them available because most people, after they don't need them anymore, they, they either pitch them or just sell them. So they're very, very cheap, very easy to come by. What else would you do with the link? Right. <laughs> All right. Well, I always appreciate you tuning in to watch these things. We look forward to bringing you more. Again, I'd like to thank the model airplane maker, Chris, for doing this for us. And we will give you a link to his YouTube channel so you can tune in and see his thoughts and, and procedures for doing models. He did a spectacular job on an SR-71 about different tonalities of black, if you can believe Black is not always black, especially when you want to vary it up and make your model not look like a, a black thing. So I encourage you to check him out, and we'll see you again in about a week. Thanks for watching. Okay, don't forget, please subscribe, slap that bell, hit that like button, and join Team Hobby Center.